Great. Good afternoon again. And we are delighted uh, to be joined uh, by two wonderful briefers. So today, first, uh, Dr. Agnes uh, Mary Chimbiri Molande, the permanent representative of Malawi to the United Nations. And next to her is Ms. Rabab Fatima, the high representative for least developed countries, landlocked developing countries, and small island developing states. They're here to speak to you about the upcoming Doha uh, 5 uh, conference on the least uh, developed countries. Uh, Ambassador, please, you have the floor, and then we'll hear from the high representative. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Agnes Mary Chimbiri Molande, and I'm the permanent representative of the Republic of Malawi to the United Nations. It is currently my honor to be the chair of the group of the least developed countries. The fifth UN conference for the least developed countries is taking place next month in Doha, Qatar. It is happening two years later than we originally hoped, but the pandemic got it in front of us twice. But while the conference was postponed, the ambitions of the LDCs were not. The pandemic sent our development progress backwards, but not our hunger for progress, development, and equality. The multiple crises swelling globally today are at their most dangerous point in the ODCs. COVID-19, the climate emergency, fuel and food shortages, price hikes, instability, and conflicts. The LDCs struggle to respond adequately. And for this reason, in Qatar, we will propose partnerships and pledges to deliver the Doha Program of Action, a roadmap for the entire international community to help the LDCs achieve a resilient recovery from the current crisis and accelerate our progress to achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. The conference aims to eradicate extreme poverty, strengthen labor markets, facilitate access to sustainable and innovative financing for LDCs, address inequalities within and among countries, leverage the power of science, technology, and innovation, and help transform the structure of our economies, helping them become more diversified, vibrant, and resilient to shocks. I want to extend many th my thanks to everyone in the ODC family and the wider UN and international community who worked so hard over the past two years through the most turbulent times to produce their Doha program of action and get us ready for the LDC5 conference where we will deliver on its promise. I hope to see you all in Doha. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, please. Ms. Rachman, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stefan. Uh, good morning, uh, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Rabab Fatima. I am the Under Secretary General and High Representative for the least developed countries, landlocked developing countries, and small island developing states. And I'm also the Secretary General of the LDC 5 Conference. Thank you very much for giving us this opportunity to share a few notes about the conference, which is about a week away from now. As already uh, mentioned by Ambassador Chimbiri Molande, the fifth UN conference for the least developed countries, or uh, as the LDC-5, as it is popularly known, is taking place at the, heads, uh, uh, at the head of state and government level in Doha, Qatar, from the 5th to the 9th of March. Uh, it represents a, a, a once-in-a-decade opportunity to chart a new path for accelerating sustainable development in the places where international assistance is most needed. In Doha, world leaders will get together to agree on partnerships and plans to deliver an ambitious 10-year action plan to help the world's most vulnerable countries get back on track and thrive amid ongoing global challenges. They remain, the LDCs, the 46 LDCs, remain at the forefront of the current global economic crisis and the climate emergency, and the COVID-19 pandemic hit them the hardest, derailing their development progress. As mentioned uh, by the ambassador, this 10-year uh, plan, which is known as a Doha uh, 
Program of Action, the DPOA. Uh, it was adopted actually by consensus by the UN General Assembly last March. So we are actually going to Doha with the uh, outcome document already agreed to by the member states. The Doha Program of Action aims uh, to overcome the uh, LDC structural challenges, help to, uh, to help eradicate poverty, achieve internationally agreed development goals, and ensure that everybody's dignity and potential is guaranteed no matter where they are. There are clear targets, goals, and deliverables, and it complements the 2030 Agenda and will run in parallel to the decade of action, the last decade of Agenda 2030. Uh, I believe the folder for the, uh, for the conference has already been distributed to you along uh, with the Doha Program of Action, and we can, uh, of course, provide you uh, with more information if needed. But just let me highlight that leaders from the highest levels of the civil society, parliaments, and the private sector, along with, of course, government leaders, will be there. And the others are there out of uh, spirit of solidarity and urgency, but also because there is tremendous opportunity that exists with the, uh, with the LDCs. We have a total of over 2,000 registered representatives from the civil society, youth, and the private sector, as well as over 250 media representatives who have registered. And uh, over and above that, about 2,500, 2,500 from the government uh, uh, delegates have also registered from the government. So as you can see, it's going to be a major gathering. Besides the general debate and the high-level roundtables, there will be parallel tracks with their full agenda and programs uh, of the private sector, civil society, youth, parliamentarians, and of course the media and the UN system. Uh, we expect to have over 100 side events there. The UN Secretary General is convening a meeting of the principles of the UN entities to ensure that the UN system is invested in efforts to fully integrate the Doha Program of Action and its implementation at all levels. And in the same vein, uh, the resident coordinators from all LDCs will also be there. We are sponsoring two journalists each from the 46 LDCs, and they will have the opportunity to witness uh, firsthand a major UN gathering. We will also have media work for, uh, workshops for, uh, for them, and we are also expecting a high presence of international media there. Uh, dear colleagues, it's true that LDCs have many challenges uh, which stand on the way of their socioeconomic development. They constitute 14% of the world's population, that is about 1.2 billion people, but less than 1.3% of the world's economic output. Barely half uh, the people in the LDCs have electricity mm -hmm. at home, and fewer than one in five have access to the internet. But there's the other side of the story, too. Mm -hmm. LDCs remain one of the most untapped potentials in the world, from natural to human resources. By the end of the decade, one in five babies will be born in the LDCs. Their youth population are already opening a massive potential demographic dividend. The number of working age people will double over the next three decades to over one billion in the LDCs. And these young people are extremely entrepreneurial and innovative, and we'll be meeting many of them in Doha. And crucially, of the 46 LDCs, 16 are already on the track to graduating out of the category and integrating more fully into the global economy. And I think that's also a success story that we'll be highlighting in Doha. So as you can see, the 46 LDCs represent a growing market, manufacturing and services hub, and the right investment in the LDCs will essentially mean that they will emerge as a driver for global growth. If we can address that stand, uh, what stands on the way of harnessing the potentials that exist uh, in, the, in the LDCs, namely access to finance, structural constraints, trade barriers, ICT limitations, expensive power and energy, et cetera, the LDCs can be the next centers of excellence for many economic and social innovations, and there are some very good models and examples to show from the LDCs, especially those who are graduating. In Doha, we will also be marking the 50th anniversary of the LDC category, and we hope that by the end of the conference, we leave with a blueprint to graduate 15 more LDCs out of that category within the next decade. And crucially, this plan will also need the support of the international community. 
How we help the most vulnerable member states through this period of peril is a litmus test for the idea of leaving no one behind, and indeed for our global commitment to solidarity and cooperation. And uh, if I may just say it so that you know, my, my office stands ready to uh, provide you with the list of attendees of the confirmed attendees and any other information, as I said, and I believe the folder has already been uh, uh, circulated to you. I hope that we will be seeing many of you in Doha, uh, if not you personally, but at least uh, your colleagues from your agencies and uh, media houses. And it is extremely important that, you know, word out of Doha gets around. I think it's extremely important that the world now stands forward and supports the LDCs. I shall rest it this. Thank, Thank you very, you very much. much. I will take any questions. Uh, Deji, please. Hi, uh, this is Deji Xu with China Central Television on behalf of the uh, UN Correspondent Association. Thank you for your briefing. Uh, I just have one question. We know that after the COVID-19 pandemic, the world actually faced a very big challenges to recover. And recently, the world's attention has been attracted by Ukraine crisis, by the earthquake, and so is the pledge and the money. So in, in, this, in this scenario, how could the LDCs, again, uh, uh, get the attention from the global community and help to, to develop? Please. Yeah, no, thank you very much. Um, um, it's, again, a very, you know, you have rightly said that the LDCs have been at the forefront of many of the challenges, whether we are talking about the COVID, whether we're talking about the ongoing uh, conflicts, the war in Ukraine, and uh, whether it's the climate crisis, as I've said. And it is indeed very true that the situation is very dire. But as I've said, these LDCs actually make up about one in six uh, in, the, uh, in our planet actually are in the LDCs, 1.2 billion people. If we leave them behind, I think it is going to be something that the international community, that burden of, will fall on the international community itself. Especially now, when we are meeting in the midst of the crisis, especially now when we see all the potentials that exist, especially now when the LDCs themselves are committed to also do their part in, you know, in meeting the challenges that go forward. It is extremely important that one crisis, what is happening in Ukraine, of course, a lot of uh, the resources and attention certainly is being diverted there, but that doesn't mean that we forget the, uh, that the LDCs are there and they need our support. And if you look at the large number of uh, governments and others who have registered to come to Doha, I think that speaks for itself, that they do want to make a difference. I think they all do know that they have to address the crisis that looms there. So we are hopeful that the Doha crisis could be the turning point uh, for the for the LDCs in in getting back on track with the development trajectory. Thank you. Yes, Ambassador, please. <coughs> Just to add that, uh, uh, thank for for the question. Just to add that the LDC five is a litmus test for the ambition of leaving no one behind, and uh, the economic case for why the richer countries should support the LDCs is also very clear, and you know. Um, the young people, as um, um, Rabab has said, the young people give us an opportunity, the bank of hope for the future, for the LDCs. Thank you. Thank you. Ephraim, Arab News. Thank you, Steph. Thank you very much for this briefing. Uh, a question on the role of the leaders of developed countries in all of this, and how much do you think there are this idea of investing in LDC countries and the potential of investment there is gaining traction in the developed uh, countries. That's one question. And a second one, can you, could you please name some of the countries? You mentioned 15 countries are about to graduate by the end of the decade. If you could mention a few, please. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. And uh, I would, again, be very optimistic about the, uh, about the commitment of the developing north or the developed countries to the LDCs. And I think that's very clear. Uh, in the Doha program of action, which was, which is, I think, a very ambitious um, uh, program of action, and it was adopted by consensus here. So I think the commitment of the developing north, of the developed countries, is very much there. I think it's very clear if, the, if we are to leave no one behind, in addition to the SDGs, this is also another document, which will go hand in hand with the Agenda 2030. As I say, and I think as we all know, that uh, many of the countries, especially the LDCs, I mean, on, on them, uh, uh, the, the success of the Agenda 2030 rests. 
If these countries are left behind, then we will not have an Agenda 2030 to celebrate in 2030. So I think that is, people are aware of that, governments are aware of that, countries are aware of that, and I'm hopeful that leaders from the developing north will also be there in Doha to give that, to, to show their solidarity and also come with concrete commitments how to support the LDCs, especially in the implementation of the Doha Program of Action. You mentioned about uh, the countries, uh, the graduating countries. Actually, this is the first time in the history of the LDC group that we have the highest number of countries who are on the graduation track, 16 in total, uh, 12 from the Asia-Pacific region and four from Africa. And the latest one, which met the recommendation of the Committee for Development Pla Policy, were Bangladesh, Nepal, and Lao PDR from Asia. From Africa, does anybody have the full list? From, I'm asking my team there. But there are mostly uh, a large number of the countries from Asia Pacific countries will be, Asia Pacific region are actually on graduation track in addition. So total of 16, I can provide you with the list after this meeting. I'm sorry, just a quick follow up. And will there be a big representation from the developed north in the conference? Do we know who's coming? Who's e yeah, I mean, you thank said you. you'll provide us with a list, but it's good to know what's the yes. level of engagement. Yes, uh, we are expecting, uh, uh, we were expecting far more, but I think there are other sort of uh, developments around the world that may have kept some away. But we do have, uh, for instance, the president of Slovenia, the president of Poland coming. Uh, we also have a large number of ministers, especially ministers of foreign affairs and minister for development cooperation of the major uh, countries from the partner countries of the LDCs, both from Europe and elsewhere. And uh, for instance, in the United States, we have the deputy head of deputy administrator of the USAID, who is leading a very large delegation uh, from the government as well as from the private sector. But what is important is it's not only the governments who are coming, but also very critically, I mean, we have about 500 leading CEOs, both from the developing north as well as from the LDCs who are going to be there. So there's clearly a very high interest from the part of the, L, uh, from the private sector of the potentials in the LDCs. And I think that's extremely important. And uh, uh, we are having high level events uh, between the governments and, and the private sector leaders. It's uh, very important that they meet up so that we can see some follow through uh, after Doha. Thank you. We have a question online from Iftikhar Ali, Associated Press of Pakistan. Iftikhar, please, you have the floor. Hello. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Steph. Uh, my question has been asked, but I will ask the high representative also whether uh, debt relief, uh, which is the major challenge to the developing countries, is on the agenda of the uh, of the conference, Doha conference. Thank you very much, Mr. Ali. Uh, yes, indeed. I mean, you know, almost half of the LDCs are in debt distress or at high risk uh, of it. Uh, out of the 46 LDCs, seven are already in debt distress and 15 are at high risk. And uh, so, yes, uh, uh, certainly this is a discussion that will come up. And we are expecting also, as I said, you know, leaders from the developing not to be there, but also leaders uh, from the international financial institutions will be there, World Bank, IMF, the regional development bank. So certainly this will be very high on the agenda uh, in Doha. Thank you very much. Thank you. Representative and the permanent uh, representative of Malawi, so thank you for coming and uh, thank you for the briefing. Have a good afternoon.